Ladies and gentlemen, right here at the Palladium, they have a great tradition for great double acts. Like Flanagan and Allen, Mike and Bernie Winters, Morgan and Wise, Uriah and Fontaine. And tonight's no exception. I'm chuffed to introduce Peter Cook and Dudley Moore. Nothing like a nice cup of tea. Nothing like a nice cup of tea. The beverage of Queen. How many sugars would you like? Eight. Heat? Partially. Only partially, Dad? Yeah, I don't want to have to do it. I'm on a diet. <laughs> you don't want to get you fainted to the blood. Too no. much sugar in the blood, Dad, do Course you? not, Pete. How's it going with your music and piano lessons? Oh, you mean the Ephraim Bagg teach yourself the piano by colour method? Yes, how does that method work, the Ephraim Bagg method? Oh, well, it's very easy. In layman's terms, Pete, you have a different colour for each note on the piano. Uh, and you have the colours laid out and you learn your tunes like that. For instance, you have C, you have red, D, you have yellow, E, you have green, and so on up the scale. Do you have Titian? B flat. That's a lovely colour, Titian. Yeah, yeah. It sounds a wonderful method. Oh, it is wonderful. Igor Stravinsky used it. I remember seeing that on the advertisement, except I thought it said, this is the method that Igor Stravinsky does not use. Oh, yes, that's right, yeah. That's what made it famous. Yes, and Beethoven didn't use it either. No musician has ever used it. No. That's why it's got such a following. Yes, exactly. What was that you were playing there? Uh, red, blue, green. No, what's the title of the song? Uh, the song was called In the Nude. It's, um, <laughs> it's a boogie-woogie version of In the Mood that Claude Debussy wrote 40 years previous. Oh, yes, Debussy. Debussy wrote In the Nude, didn't well, he? Well, it was very hot in Tahiti where he used to compose. <laughs> Uh, had a wonderful ear for music, though. The Bursi had a wonderful ear for music. His left ear. Yeah. It's a wonderful ear. His right one was terrible. And uh, eventually he had to bite it off and send it to Queen Victoria. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and she sent back a bag of old tennis balls with a covering note saying, We're not amused. She had a <laughs> wonderful sense of humour. Yeah. Uh, why are you learning, actually? Uh, well, I'm learning because I want to go into showbiz and get a few birds. <laughs> yeah. What kind of act were you thinking of doing? Uh, well, I thought of doing an act like Mrs Mills, you know. Oh, yes, lovely. Start off with a song like Bye Bye Billy Bumblebee. Bye Bye Billy Bumblebee. Bye 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 Billy Bumblebee. Bye 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 the folk idiom is very popular now, the songs of protest, which are so justified. Because yeah. when you look round you, Dad, and you see all the way the awful lunacy of the politicians, yeah. the hydrogen bomb of the injustice, yeah. it makes you absolutely furious. You sick, Somebody it? can take his finger, put it up in the air, put it down on a button, and a whole world is blown up in a nuclear hollyhock. Yeah. It must... <laughs> Um, mus mushroom cloud of horror. A toadstool of death. Yeah. It makes me furious. Mm. I wrote that song about it, remember? I was so angry once, I, I wrote that song. Yeah. Come off it, Mr Menzies. Come off it, you and I. An end to nuclear lunacy. Or else the world must die. He's nine foot one. He's five foot three. He plays for Spurs. Does he really? Yes. <laughs> Inside left. Oh, That's a wonderful way of doing it. You know yeah. that... Uh, Nearly fell off your seat, didn't Did you? Not, yeah. uh, that, uh, uh, Peter, you know that one, uh, Peter, Paul, and St. Joan? They, <laughs> they make over five quid a night with that stuff. Really? They do the, uh, the answer, my friend, is blowing in, in the wind. wind. The, the answer, answer is blowing in the wind. wind. Yeah. Lovely. I was listening to that one day in the kitchen. It was a lovely sunny day. Yeah. I looked out the window, the sun was beautifully there, the yeah. clouds scudding across it. Little children playing with their hoops in the meadows. Precisely. <laughs> Birds twittering in the sky. Yeah. And a bit of a wind going. I heard this. The answer, my friend, yeah. is blowing yeah. in the wind. So I thought I'd pop outside and see if it was. Yeah. And sure enough, fluttering from over the horizon, 
came a strange white piece of paper lying over Shadwell Heath. Well, naturally, I pursued it. It lighted in a gooseberry bush, and I found it and took it out. Do you know what it said? What? It said, McWhirter's raspberry-style ice lollies. <laughs> They are, sir, my friend, is my bird, is Ralph beside ice lollies. It's not a very good answer, is it's it? It's a please? rotten answer. Uh, if that's the answer, I'm not going to ask the question no, either. It's a rotten no. answer. Of course, of course, if you're thinking of entering the ephemeral world of show business, Dad, you must beware to keep hold of your values. Yeah. Because it's a strange artificial world. Behind the glamour and the glitter lurks the heartbreak. Yeah, behind the clown's happy bus lurks a tear of tragedy. A continual tear of tragedy. Yeah. Everything's so artificial and false. I mean, take Kirk Douglas. Yeah. What do you think of when you think of Kirk Douglas? Dimple. Dimple. <laughs> Dimple springs to your lips. Springs to his chin. Do you, <laughs> do you know what that dimple is? What is it? What is it? That dimple, it's a wart. It's not, it's a dimple, it goes in. No, it's a wart, it goes out. But what they do in Hollywood is they photograph it in double, reverse, triple negative, <laughs> and it comes out or goes in looking like a dimple. Oh, yeah. It's the same with his nose. His nose goes in as well. Well, he's got an ingrowing nose, has he? Yes. <laughs> he nearly kills himself every time he sneezes. Oh. <laughs> Of course, you know, the same sort of artificiality can be found with Sonia Henney, the skater. Oh, Sonia Henney. She couldn't skate a note. Not they, a note. They used, to, they used to stand her up on one leg and move the ice rink round underneath her. That was the only way to simulate it, wasn't it, Dad? Mind you, Pete, she had a wonderful smile. No, she had a horrible smile. What they did was they took Myrna Loy's smile and dubbed it onto Sonia Henney. Oh. Well, it's very strange, because I can't stand Myrna Loy's smile, but it looks lovely on Sonia. It's lovely on Sonia, lousy on Myrna. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's show business, Well, of that. course, another example like that is Lawrence Harvey's legs, which are played by Marlene Dietrich. Yeah. <laughs> Beautifully played at that. Wonder. Of course, Dad, if you're going to get on in show business, you've got to have a good name, yeah. something to catch the public. What do you think of calling yourself? I thought of calling myself Gregory Peck. <laughs> it's a good name. It's got a certain ring to it, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. The only trouble is, I think it's already been used by somebody. Oh, wait Who's a minute. Who's that bloke yes. who used um, it? Um, oh, wasn't it? Um, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Gregory... Gregory... Uh, uh, Palmer? Palmerston? Palm... Peck. 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 Gregory Peck's used Gregory it. Gregory Peck. Yeah. He's the one. He's yeah. been... <laughs> He's been flaunting it all over the place. Yeah. Of course, you know the secret about Peck, no. Gregory Peck? No. He can't sit down. Really? He can't sit down, Dad. He has an ailment of what can only be described as the... Uh, bottom. Of the bottom. <laughs> yeah. And he daren't sit down, so he has this bloke to do all the standing work for his bottom. Or the sitting work, you mean? The sitting work. Yeah. It's all done by George Nodes of Dagenham. Dagenham Dye Works? Dagenham Dye Works. Oh, yeah. He sits down for Gregory Peck. Really? You must have seen it at the end of Guns of Navarone, starring Gregory Peck with the active participation of George Nodes' bottom. Oh. And now Nodes is getting very uppity about it. He's asking for better billing. He's asking for the next one to be starring George Nodes' bottom and introducing Gregory Peck. Oh. He's getting very big-headed about his bottom. Uh, his bottom's gone to his head, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Best place for it, Dad. Yeah. Best place yeah. for it. Did I tell you a very strange experience I had last night, Pete? No, Dad. What was it? Well, Pete, I was sitting down uh, in bed, actually, at the time, drinking a cup of cocoa. Of course you were, Dad. Of course I was, Pete. <laughs> and I was flicking through Sophisticated Screen Secrets, the wonderful magazine for the film Conny Skinny. And uh, <laughs> I was uh, drinking my cocoa. Of course you were, Dad. Of course I was, Pete. It was a June 1930 edition. Oh, yes. And I was flicking over the yellow pages, you know. Steamed in history. And coffee stained. <laughs> and, and I come across this picture of Jane Russell. The busty beauty. Oh, this is the point, Pete. This is the point. Jane Russell, flat as a pancake. <laughs> it was a still from a film called The In-Law. I thought to myself, funny, you know. <laughs> busty beauty, nothing there. I thought, you know, funny. funny. Busty beauty, nothing <laughs> there. Yeah. Yeah. Fame for the, uh, uh the do does, nothing there, Barney, yeah. nasty beauty, nothing <laughs> there, Barney. Yeah. Well done. I'll tell you what the answer is to that. What's that, Pete? Blowing yeah. in the wind, is it? No, it's not blowing. <laughs> 
the answer to that is that Jane Russell was indeed extremely flat-chested and they made a film, The Indoor, it was a terrible failure and nobody went to see it. I didn't go to see it, I remember that. I didn't either, no. I remember you not going to see it. Oh. Anyway, Metro Goldwyn Paramount Mayer did an audience research to see why no one had gone. And back came the answer. Lack of busty substances. <laughs> well, what they did was they persuaded this bloke, Sabu. Oh, the uh, Indian elephant boy. You remember Sabu, lovely little bloke. Yeah. They asked Sabu to climb into her blouse yeah. and <laughs> stick his fists out. <laughs> stick his fists out like this to simulate the busty substance. And that's how they made it. They changed the name to the outlaw and it was a tremendous success. <laughs> Of course, it was dreadful conditions in there, yeah. inside the blouse. Sweated labour, really. Sweated labour. <laughs> That's why they had to get an Indian to do it. You never get a white bloke. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible conditions. And uh, it was this, it was this busty beauty that gave her her wonderful B.O. appeal. <laughs> I don't think I'd go for B.O. appeal, please. No, B.O. is the Hollywood term dad for box office. Box office. <laughs> That's what they whisper to each other in sophisticated circles on Malibu Beach, yeah. don't you? Well, I must say, Pete, the film industry sounds a very shoddy affair, doesn't it? It is. I should stick to your music, Stick Dad. to the music. Did yes. I tell you I've almost learned that tune those two blokes sing? No. Can't play it, it's very good. Yes, uh, I'll do that. The other one goes, sir. Uh, uh, blue, red, green, blue, yellow, ochre, white. Blue, red, green, blue, yellow, green, red chicken. I think he's got it. Uh, By George, he's got it. Now is the time to win the whole Bye.